<laughs> it's amazing to me. It's completely surprising how different one day around my house seems to be from another day. We've been changing over from our summer to our fall. And uh, with that, I had to change the, my little tabernacle out here, my little deck, <laughs> with plants and everything, to gradually move them inside and to begin to transition from summer to fall. And as such, likewise, you feel that kind of winding down, the little difference that's going on in life that changes from the just the basking in the summer sun and maybe lying on the beach or maybe in a river, you know, too big or maybe camping out. Like, I just recently had come back from being next to a beautiful creek in Oregon and just rushing with cold water. And my wife and I camped out for a week and just did absolutely nothing. <laughs> and I never enjoyed it so much in all my life. What a joy and what a refreshing time we had. But today, today, this day, is the eve, because tonight is actually when it starts, but it's called Rosh Hashanah. It's a head of the year. It's the Yom Truah, the time of the sounding of the shofar, the day of the listening to the sound that we might hear what it is that the Lord our God would speak to us and to say. And you know, my blessing to you, my fervent, effectual prayer that I might offer for you is that whether you're a messianic <laughs> or a messiantic or you just messy <laughs> whether you're having a precious moment Or, oy vey, we're having such a wonderful time that, oh God. We daven, and we pray, and we say, and we speak in tongues. <laughs> and yes, I have to get to tongues, just don't go there. But, in all that you are today, in all that God has made you and brought you and taught you and inspired you with in your tradition or in your exposition of studying the scriptures that whether you're a Yahoo, a Babu, <laughs> a Yo-Yo, or whatever you are, today is Rosh Hashanah and it's a time that God uses to inspire us to conspire within our hearts a desire for something more than what we are. Somehow we reach out to Jewish traditions and Jewish examples and we see in them the Messiah, Jesus our Lord, shining through the examples of what the traditions have become and we can see God in them. But you know what else? We can see God in you. And that is a tradition of Rosh Hashanah. To see God in what He has created and to thank Him for it. Because we need to turn our attention from the things of the seen world to the unseen realm of God's kingdom. To turn, as it were, from what we think we know to who we do know. And that is Jesus. Because at a time of when God sounds forth the trumpet, it gets our attention. When we hear the trua, the, the sounding forth, the staccata sound, so to speak, of the trumpet blast, when we hear the long call, as it were, from the Lord, making a noise, making a sounding, then we are reminded that Jesus is coming, and He's coming soon. Now, 
you may think it's going to be tonight or tomorrow, but, you know, God bless you if you do. I pray you don't lose your faith if you don't. But the rapture will not necessarily happen today or tomorrow, but okay, if you think it is, then go be blessed. But shortly, Jesus will return, and he will rapture some, some he'll leave behind. He will be Lord of all. But one of the things we should be doing is not focusing on the rapture, and not focusing on the day, but enjoying the part of the day that God wants us to have today, which is a blessing to you, which is a time of presenting yourself before the Lord, which is a time of coming before Him with thanksgiving and looking forward to a year of just revelation of what Jesus, we can see, is doing, not only in you, but in me. Not only in what we have in our hands, but in what we can't see in the land that He is moving and touching on us and saving those who, despite themselves, are being saved, irregardless of what they know. God is bringing them to a place of what He knows. So may I pray for you that that the Lord would inscribe you this year, this new year, the 5772, the October coming of 2011, that you remind yourself that in your New Year's resolutions, whether they be right now, as the civil year of Judaism is changing, or whether they be in the Gentile calendar of the, when you make a New Year's resolution in January, that right now you resolve to change something in your life, to turn it to the Lord, to turn your attention a little bit differently and kind of make it a focus to be inscribed towards God, to be given over to God, to be dedicated to the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, because it's not about donning, you know, a kippa, though I have one, I could put it on. It's not about wearing a tali, so I have those, you know, lots of varieties of them. It's not just Yemenite that came out, you know, that there's a variety, but there's all kinds of talis, you know, and there's all kinds of traditions that you can do. Even, you know, if you're a Catholic, there's traditions there, or you're a Protestant, there's traditions there. Or you're, to put it bluntly, a Calvary Chapel, there's traditions there, believe me. <laughs> and there's all kinds of things you can do to celebrate, and whatever it is that blesses you to turn you to closer walk with Jesus, that you should do. But in every day, in all ways, take it to the Lord and enjoy the blessing that He has for you. Because the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you. And not only give you peace, but give Him Himself. Give you the realization of the knowledge of the Son of God and God the Father. That you might walk in His Spirit and know Him with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, and being entrusted in the Father God meaning not in your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge Him, and let Him direct your path. For this year we pray that you would trust in the Lord. And learn Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. If nothing else in your life, learn that one. It will make a huge difference. They shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. O Lord our God, other lords besides thee have had dominion over us. But by you and you alone we will make mention of your name. We are yours. You have never... You alone bear rule over them, and they were not called by your name. All people of the earth shall see that thou art called. And... Let's do that one over again. All people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. The Lord will not forsake his people for his great namesake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you his people. The Lord has made you his people. You, yeah. No, he doesn't make you a Jew, so don't go there. Don't don't make yourself a Jewish wannabe because you think you gotta be, because you haven't been to be, but you think you wanna be. God made you the way you are today. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, barbarian, Scythian, nor free in Christ Jesus. We are all one in the Spirit, one in the Lord. 
don't get out of the great heritage you have in Jesus, whatsoever that may be. Who you are is what you are. Being a Jew, I always tell people, why would you want to be? But anyways, if you are, of course you know what you are and you know your heritage. But the point is, don't deny what you are just because you think someone else has got it better or worse. Just be you, because the Lord made you that way. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for your own sake, O oh my God, and for your city and for your people which are called by your name. Help us, O oh God of our salvation, for the glory of your name, and deliver us, and purge away our sins for your name's sake. When I read of Daniel's prayer and I think of that words that we just read, I consider how well God inspired him to be an intercessor for the children of Israel, the people of Israel, and for us. When you pray and intercede for others, when you really care about other people to bless them, then you'll identify with them and admit you are sinful as well as them. You are in need as well as them. When you look at other people, you say, oh, well, they're false teachers. But if you're praying for them, then aren't you a false teacher in some ways? When you discry them, when you chastise them, when you beat on them, aren't you in some ways being like, you know, what they are? Have you not considered the smoke, the speck, the beam, the sin in your own life? as well as in the lives of others. Would it not be better to say grace for grace and mercy for mercy, love for love and forgiveness for forgiveness? Because surely the Lord our God, if He is God, and He says He's the head of the church, is in control of the church. If He's not, then why did He write the book of Revelation? Why did He write the letters to the seven churches where He describes each individual church in detail and he specifies exactly what he wants for each one to do. It might be he's in control of all the churches. Maybe he knows better what they need than we do. So maybe we should focus in on what we're called to do by Jesus and not what we want to do for Jesus. What God tells us to do is what we do by obedience. What we think we should do is what we exercise by faith. And sometimes that faith is misplaced because if God didn't tell you to do it, who asked you to? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is safe. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament show His handiwork. The invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. He left not himself without a witness. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night shows knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. When I consider thy heavens and the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that you should visit him? There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars, for one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. They that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, that they may turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. We don't turn a person to righteousness by forcing them and speaking to them necessarily. But as a light shineth in the darkness, we shine by the example of our lives and the expression of our hearts and the desire of our will to reveal Jesus in all we do and say and feel. Because as He is the light, then men will either run to the light that they may reveal the things that are work of God or they may flee from the light that their works may not be shown that they are works of darkness because we need to do no other thing except be that light and you are today where you are as you are the way you are you're a light of the world and a city on a hill that need not hide under a bushel that need not fear what the world may do 
You don't have to go out and preach. You just have to live what you say you do. You live Christianity, you will be preaching it in a way that you never thought of before. You will be the light that people will see and follow your example as they desire to have what you have and go the way you go so they will not perish but have everlasting life. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus, that God sent not His Son into the world that He should condemn the world, but that through the Son the world might be saved. Don't condemn those that you do not know, but save those you do know. For in sharing the love of God to the entire world, you can lay down your life as Jesus did, that the world might be saved. Would you not choose this year, this 5772, this Tishrei, this time of a new year, to set a new way, a new example, a new life, a more excellent way of Jesus, to follow Him today? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean out in your own understanding, in all your ways. All your ways. And in all ways, acknowledge Him. He will direct your path today, tomorrow, and every day. Not just on Rosh Hashanah, not just for Yom Kippur, not just for this time of the fall feast, but rather through every day that is holy unto the Lord. For all days He has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in the day today that He has given us for one more day to declare His faithfulness and His handiwork, which is what you are and what I am. For we are His handiwork. We are His workmanship, created in Jesus to accomplish His purposes for His will and His way. Today,